This video is going to be showing you how to solo Grandmaster the new Nightfall up this week, which is Inverted Spire. Um, we also have Scarlet Keep up as well, so there's two new ones, and all six are in rotation. This video is going to focus on you just getting it done. It's not a Platinum run. Uh, this is more cheesy because we're on Hunter. Uh, so I thought I'd double down on being cheesy by just showing you um, what encounters you can skip and what you can't in the whole run. Um, as most people who are going for this are either um, going for the mats in team or farming it, which this is a good nightfall to farm the Grandmaster on because it's not challenging, it's the easiest Grandmaster that there is available. Solo, I would recommend, even if you're doing a good run, it's going to be 40 minutes, 40, 50 minutes. It's not a very good farm for materials. So anyone that's maybe wanting to solo it is probably either looking for the challenge or they want the Conqueror Seal and they don't like to play in a team. It's, ma it's aimed at people who want to get the Conqueror Seal solo and they're not so bothered about the Platinum. So we're on a Hunter Night Stalker, we have the Pathfinder, which is bottom tree, we bought X Grenade, Gamble is Dodge, which we need, with the exotic chest plate, Six Coyote. Now, mobility got nerfed. Now it's 11 seconds dodge or 100% mobility. You must have 100% mobility. If you haven't got the best gear on your hunter, like myself, put on powerful friends. Put on powerful friends, which is Arc. Link that up with an Arc mod. I have my, I have Arc boots, and you can easily get 100% mobility and then invest in some recovery or discipline um, with mods. So with this. Start an encounter, um, you want to prioritize the snipers first. And uh, now we're gonna show you what the triggers are. So what do we mean by this? Well, there's a checkpoint that says traverse deeper. So the trigger for that, for the, to open the door at the back, is to clear a certain amount of ads. Now the Cabal and Vex, so Cabal do not count towards this at all. There are no Vex champions because of the redevelopment of this Nightfall, there used to be Vex champions in it, in the old ordeals, but now it's, um, well, when I say Vex champions, I mean Vex Overlord Mitos. There used to be Overlords in this, there's not Overlords now, it's anti-barrier and unstoppable. There is Vex Hob Goblins, but basically what I'm trying to get at is, um, the keys is Vex, but we do need to take down the Vex snipers. Now they can one-shot, so you have to be careful, as you can see. Well, not one shot, but they can if you don't have solar damage resistance on. So I have solar damage resistance on mainly for this, because in my eyes, the double anti buy right now is one of the hardest parts of the whole thing. So I felt as though um, it would be better off me putting a solar damage resistance on, which means that you want to make your six coyote solar. Because yeah, you can't put solar on an arc or void piece. So that's I had one ready to go because I had one from a previous. You know, I've got an arc one and a solo one. I am going to void six coyote at the minute. Um, but as I said, the solar damage resistance helped out, and the concussive dampener helps out all the host of things, flash damage stuff like that. Um, so resistance mods prioritize them. Don't be really using reserves unless you're really confident in what you're doing. The two anti barrier champions at the back we need to take out. So always make sure you're fully reloaded on your pulse, because it takes a lot of ammo. We're using the Giant 7, and it even has range finder in it, which helps. I've got range finder, disruption break, and my arc pulse. We need arc on, mainly because there's arc shields that we're mainly dealing with. Um, now, there'll be a couple of extra spawns, which you'll see the Minotaurs spawning. They're only um, void shields, but they can get away in the way of the anti barriers. If at any point you're literally weak, just back up and start afresh. Um, but you want to try and find a good angle. Uh, if you can, you, you want to leave the mini tires up. It might be difficult, but leave them up because there's a strap behind it. Just see. Now, I have a tether to waste to use. So we'll put it to good use and try and take out. Um, remain adds around, but we do want to keep up some of the Minotaurs because it'll distract the Cabal, which I believe there is one or two alive or one left is ideal. We try to get a cell there, so for those that don't know, if you Anarchy or if you use Weaver Horde or something on an enemy and then swap to an, a weapon that can generate cells, you'll get a cell. So 
Uh, we did seven Seraph weapon, Eyeglass weapon. As long as you swap to that weapon, equip it, you'll get a sell off it. Now we are going to take down the Blood Guard, uh, which isn't required, but I would advise that you do that because um, we want to farm up ammo off the champion below, the Unstoppable. The Unstoppable is going to do Void to the Minotaur, so the strat is you keep the Cabal Unstoppable alive to take down the Minotaurs. If there was two or three Minotaurs up, they would just fight that Unstoppable, let the Unstoppable fight the Minotaurs to take the shield, uh, and we can do that. We could obviously use our nade as well, but it just makes it easier because the Minotaur isn't firing at us up top. So we're going to get the Unstoppable finishable because we have the seasonal mod on, which is called Spores of War. Generating heavy ammo on a finisher kill on a champion. So that's what we're doing here. As you can see, I've only got eight anarchy. It takes a lot of ammo to deal with this part. Everything's killed apart from the two champions below, which we don't need to take. So there's an eye barrier and there's an unstoppable. We're not going to take them at all. You want to get up on ammo, everything, pick up primary heavy, and then move forward. Now, another thing with double primary, obviously we've got to run it. Because there's unstoppables and anti barriers, we have to. Um, we're not going to be using lament on something like this. Knowing that, it's more consistent for heavy ammo. That's why Those double primary and a heavy is very good, because you don't get special ammo to drop. Therefore, you're more consistent to have more anarchy or whatever power weapon you're using, and you have a consistent way of stunning all types of champs solo. That's why we're always running this type of loadout. Now we're going to invis past uh, this section as well. As I said, this is showing you how to sort of do it with minimum effort. I got this done on my second or third go. Um, I tried my third score with a different type of loadout, and then my then two goes on this loadout. My second go, I died from. I don't mind. I think the the ships up ahead killed me, so that can happen. These uh, freshers, they shot me down on my sparrow. So. Um, the idea is you don't do it. Across this battlefield there'll be a bunch of ads that spawn up. Now because solar damage, um, sorry no, arc damage and en environmental damage, the freshers are classed as environmental damage when they hit you. If they all hit you at once, if you're on a sparrow, it one shot you. They can actually kill you as well if they all hit you with a clean shot. So, let the freshers come in, forget about fighting the ads and just avoid their attacks so important you do this, let them fly past. When they flew past, you're good to go. Yeah. Now with the battlefield, again with the triggers, um, is the two blood guards. So there's one left and right. The spawns are fixed. Once over, the blood guards used to be random spawn. Now they're not. They're actually in each cabal house, left and right. We know where they are at all times. There's a sniper left and right that we need. you need to take, because as you saw, a sniper can nearly kill you. If I didn't have solar damage resistance on, it would be a one shot. So they're very dangerous snipers. You could put sniper damage resistance on, but I don't think you need that. A concussive for general play for against a whole host of enemies and the solar damage resistance for the champions at the start and the snipers. And I think that covers a lot. Arc damage resistance would be nice, because you'll see at the very end for the boss fight, arc damage resistance is, would be handy. But on a Night Stalker, you can avoid a lot of um, fire. This is a good angle to take this champ. Uh, not this champ, but this major. It's not a bad angle. I end up pushing to this rock, which isn't a good idea. As you'll see, he can consistently hit me from here. Uh, you'll see me get one shot quite a lot. Just playing a little bit too aggressive. Try not to rush this. Even though it's a quick run because you're chasing it. Don't get overconfident by saying, oh, I just need to do this and then and proceed. Just take your time, okay? Not like it's a champ, it's not like it's going to regen health. Where does she utilize in disruption break from my pulse, breaking his shield? As you can see there, that was quite a bit of damage I took. But this is good cover because there's adds to our left, they don't throw nades. There's a champion in the middle that doesn't hit us. So this is a really good place to stand. Just to kill the ultras. He will hide now and then as well, but you just need to peek in out of cover. I was just saving on heavy, to be honest, but I could have used way more heavy. As it usually goes with these grandmasters, I play passive, 
I don't play my usual playstyle, which is why I'm not a massive fan on them. I don't usually play how I would play. Um, that's why I like the older Nightfalls, the timed ones, because you not only it was not only a difficult sandbox challenge, you were timed, and I still think the 2017 Prestige Nightfalls timers were the hardest Nightfalls that we had. I mean, they're this hard. I'll just give you one example why they're this hard. Salathurn Song Prestige Solo. Yeah, one. Only two people in the world done it. And I think we know who the two are. Okay? It was Modern Tryhard and it was Esoteric. They are the only two people that ever completed that nightfall. That just shows you how difficult they were. Grandmasters, there's people soloing Grandmasters every day. Okay? You just need to search it up on YouTube, which is easy done. Type it in, solo Grandmaster nightfall on YouTube. Find out. You can type in search today last hour, last week, whatever. And you'll find there's there's a ton of people all around the world so on Grandmasters. So these Grandmasters aren't as difficult as what the year one was because of we're more powerful than we used to be. They will prime heavy then. But same approach with the second blue guard, we're just taking him from a distance. He dropped us a brick which is good. And then we need to get to the next checkpoint. So you want to be careful with this as you will die. So we'll come around this Area here doing imbis, dodge at the fuller shielded cabal, get the lift, go through the lift, invis immediately, and dodge. And then we're at this protection. This part is very dangerous, you want to get a shot on one of the um, melee cabal and then smoke straight away because you don't know where the champion is he sort of stands there's no fixed position where he stands so you just want to be always in the assumption that you're in danger always play like what's around the corner there's no radar on as well which in PvE I use I use a lot um, and not having it in Grandmasters can be a pain sometimes you don't know especially with Empath on so Empath means that it's like blackout not as it's basically equivalent because it's Grandmaster, so you're gonna get nearly one shot from a melee attack. Actually, they would one shot the Cabal. This champion's pretty simple to deal with. Just take a bit of cover, Anarchy. It's all timing. It's all known when he puts his shield up. Obviously, the Grandmaster champions, um, the AI is better than you know the Legend uh, champions, so they're gonna put their shield up sooner. You just need to get used to the time on it. We're going to get him finishable. That's very important. So you top up on your anarchy. Because you do want full anarchy going into the boss fight. For sure, 100%. We're just about full. There'll be ads looking at you from behind. Which I'm going to show you how this part is done. So we activate the lift. We jump around this corner. And we jump on this ledge. And the platforms will circle round. And you just need to jump on each one. There is a red ledge above you but you can't seem to stand on that from testing that I done seems to be that you slip off so you don't need to do that so just keep jumping on and off the ledges as they rotate as I said the ads behind you they're not gonna hit you it looks like they're gonna they want to try and shoot you but they won't they can't hit you from here there'll obviously be champions over there there's a champion trying to push us up the cabal just be cautious because they can still hit you at this location. You can do a nade as well to stagger them if you wanted, but they weren't pushing too much. We're at 95%, so we're gonna do a smoke. As soon as you go around that corner, whichever corner you, right. whether you're going left or right, you need to do us an invis. Now I went left because the ads were pushing right. If the ads are pushing left, then go right. Go to where the least danger is. Now this bit's probably not required and you could skip this better than what I did, but I decided that the snipers, because of how deadly they are, I was wanting to take care of the snipers up at the top right hand side. The thing is with this is that there's an unstoppable and there's a bunch of void shields. Now as you can see my hand cannons piercing past their shield, which is a perk of explosive payload. 
Whether this is intended or not, I'm not sure, but it's always been the case with these types of enemies. We can just whittle them down. Just take them out first so we can get an angle on the snipers. You'll see where the snipers are when I approach them. If the unstoppable pushes you, you want to stop him, go in viz, dodge, and what have you. But try not to peek out too much because that will cause the unstoppable to push. There's the explosive next to them, which we'll try. So we've got one, there's three snipers. Unstoppable's pushing. I'm going to back up. Which he appears not to push, but I'm sure I've seen him push on previous weeks. I've done this last time he pushed, so just be careful of it. I'm going to get a stop, finish off the previous Scions. And we're going to smoke in this pass. We're safe to do it then because the snipers are down. The snipers are down, there's no danger as long as we smoke dodge in time. In the right timing. We're going to wait for our second dodge. And try not to aggro the ads in this game. Smoke. Dodge. And then we can run past. That bit's not too difficult. <clears throat> now with the drill section. Obviously this would be way more difficult if I was actually going for platinum. But doing it like this is pretty much simple. You just smoke and dodge and when possible. I smoke the... Pretty soon, just in case the snipers will get me. But this middle, there's three flaws. Okay? The middle path, the drill will never hit you. Top, middle, the drill may hit you. So you always just go around the middle path and you'll never lose if you do that. Got the boss, it's 17 mates. And we can just sort of get the boss fight done, which is going to take the longest path of the run itself. We've got full armor, we've got a super. We've got three arc harpies, this is the main reason why we've got an arc primary on, so we're not wasting anarchy when a primary could do the job. Okay, so make sure, you, make sure you've got an arc. Well, this is the only arc pulse, I believe, so it would have to be this. Um, this season, I think. I think there is another arc pulse, actually. Infinite paths, but I haven't got it. And it's very rare pulse. So, we'll take out the final arc harpy. If they drop you heavy, good, don't pick it up. I wasn't so fortunate. Now, what I would advise doing with this, this is this is my, this was my first time at the boss. Right? So we do an anarchy on the floor, three anarchies, and then escape. I would do the three anarchies and then tether him. Okay? If you do not tether with the anarchies, it would get rid of the boss straight away. What I chose to do was save the super. I was going to maybe use it on the second play. I didn't end up doing this though. Because I was noticing how much damage I was taking. Because what it is, this boss, see, when you're just doing it as a strike, it doesn't matter. But when it's on a Grandmaster, you notice the fire deals. He's doing void right now, which isn't threatening. On the second play, he does arc. Second and third, he does arc. And he's way more dangerous. Um... And that's why I wasn't doing the tether, because obviously you expose yourself a little bit with, when you're doing a tether. You can't you can't really sustain do sustain damage to him. You've got to peek in and out. Yeah? But I would recommend using save up on anarchy and use your tether on the first plate. That would be way way better. With the second plate, there's a bunch of uh, pillars. Take a short one. Tall one might have been better because he was actually hitting me a little bit. We're just going to do anarchy when possible. When he stomps, when he does his stomp attack, you can't get hit by it. But it's an opportunity for you to get some anarchy shots on. Just do two at a time, Max. You don't really need to do more than that. Um, you can do three, but your damage is capped out at two. Keep doing anarchy if possible. We're actually doing enough damage so that the ads didn't spawn him, which was excellent. Which you are timed. So you, the longer you take, the worse that second player is. The second player is very dangerous. You want to make sure you do sustain damage with the anarchy pig shoot. Don't take too long. When, if you take too long, ads are going to spawn. 
You're fine though, you'll be able to smoke invis past all of it and survive. But why take the risk when you can just do the sustain damage and you're good. This is the final plant now, so I was unsure of which way the boss was going to rotate. Basically, the reason why I was confused is because the game used to have two different encounters for each sort of strike. And that would change intermittently throughout the strike as well. But all that got changed. Now I was unsure which way the strike boss would rotate. He used to rotate clockwise on some encounters and then counterclockwise on the other encounters. Depending on what, whether it was the Cabal week or the Vex week. I um, especially remember that. But now he just goes the same way. But I was unsure at this point, that's why I'm playing. So passive, I was unsure which way it was going to rotate, but he ends up rotating clockwise from my position right now. When you hit his damage gate, so there's damage gates in it, so when he gets to around a third, he'll spawn in some ads. But I was not 100% at the time of doing this where, you know, was it a third, was it slightly more than a third or below? Wasn't 100%, that's why we was just doing a bit of damage here and there and looking round because there's no radar on. Because on this spawn, I do know it's a bit iffy. There's a bunch of goblins that spawn on top of him, and then two that spawn behind you. And if you're not on top of the goblins behind you, they'll wipe you. Simple as that. Obviously, don't step in the radiolarium because of arc damage. You'll get wrecked in the in the uh, arc pool, so try not to. Here's the spawn here. So there's two goblins behind us. This is a good location to stand. You can sort of crouch. You can still get hit, and I do occasionally do get hit from the splash damage of his attack. But the, your main focus is getting these two goblins down, and it's pretty difficult because you can't peek. There might be harpies pushing, there might be more goblins pushing. There's more goblins, as I said, on the boss, but they're standing around the boss, not pushing, which is a bit strange. Break the shield on the harpies, try and take those out. Always keep your eye on the boss, where he's moving to, is he doing his blind attack, which is, it's on a timer, he'll do his blind attack every now and then, so he's doing his timer now, it's around every 10-15 seconds he'll do this move. He'll more than likely do it if you're in cover, he's more likely to do that, it's like when an enemy will try to nade you when you're in cover, it's the same thing as that. But you have to hide, you have to peek you, as I said, because of... It's Grandmaster, you're under leveled, and because of the arc damage increased. Just keep now on the boss just to make sure he isn't rotating around, which he isn't. Fine. A good strat is to knock the goblins' heads off. Just make them push you. If you want them to push you, do that. We've got a cell here. But we wanted to go invis there. Get the cell. I didn't take out all the goblins though, I don't believe. I think there's still a couple up. Which is why I need to lure them out. It's kind of strange because they used to just used to push you. But on this one they're not. Which is probably smart AI, to be honest. We'll fill back up on our heavy. And do a nade and stuff. Sort of bait them out. You can see the boss just... Got to keep an eye on him couple of times where I didn't or played a little bit riskier than I should have like I said this was my first attempt at the boss itself so it's not going to be the best run it's not going to be optimized because the first time I'm going to go at it main priority is getting these goblins because the if you if we do damage to the boss he's going to rotate he's going to go clockwise He's going to uh, spawn in a bunch of harpies and more goblins and a couple of orange bar mages. So you, you don't want to be leaving ads up because they're going to be up with the next phase and the phase is hard enough so you don't want to make it any harder than what it should be. Now we smoked there, now we didn't get, we didn't re-dodge up, which is something important to know. If you're starting the next phase without a smoke and you can't dodge next to an ad, then you, you can be in danger and you've got to be careful. Of how you play. The 
doing one anarchy shot on him. It's important you don't do too much DPS right now and knock his head off. That is key that you don't do that. If you knock his head off and the ad spawn, then you, you're in trouble at that point. You don't want to do that. You could just end up wiping because of it. So you want to take it slowly. Let him do his phase, let him do his thing, and then take the ads. We've also got Bomber on, which I forgot to mention, so what does Bomber do? Well, every time we get a dodge, which we're doing a lot, we get grenade energy. And the grenade is very powerful because of um, Vortex, Vortex grenade lasting twice as long on this class, so... Anytime you can get a nade is super beneficial. If you just want to smoke, grenade, dodge all the time, then do it, so be it. That's fine. We've got plenty of anarchy ammo though. You can always use anarchy on the ad. It's also good to be doing a lot of dodges because you get heart of the pack, which means you're more tanky. It's giving you a little bit more resistance. So, there's always that. Getting any cells as well is very beneficial. It won't pierce the arc shield with the match game. But it will take out any goblins that hide, and same as with the last phase, the goblins hide with the boss. Which means you've sort of got a... The game's pushing you to engage with the boss. But one way around this is to do... is to knock their heads off. And we're doing a smoke here, which we don't have any way of getting it back right now, but we will do. We can... Dodge next to this enemy. So it, it's a good strat this doing it like this because um, that could be a possible wipe if you try to approach the three goblin, three four goblins with the boss up. So you definitely want to be playing back here and finding your angles because this angle's pretty good at times, but the boss can still hit you with his attack, which doesn't one shot. But he gets you one shot. I was pretty weak here. Played a bit reckless. Get a cell, which is ideal. Because that's what we were sort of wanting. And then we can take out... And then I'm confident now. Now I've took that cell. I'm confident that all the goblins are down. Now for the final phase. Is dicey. You want to be relying on invis to get you through this. So you want to make sure you're starting it with an invis ready to go. Which you can easily get that off the boss like so. Behind a pillar. Wait for your double dodge before you commence with damage. This is a good angle on the boss. You can tether from here. I missed a couple of tethers to be honest. You can tether... Now I started to jump up in the air, which isn't the best idea, but I got the damage in. And then we smoke. I overcommitted with there, so try not to, because when you do that, <clears throat> when you knock his head off, it's a done deal at that point, because you can just smoke, dodge, invis, anarchy, and that will finish the fight off. Don't bother trying to get that burst damage done, because you may die, I nearly did. Okay. But that was basically the, how to get the Soul Grand Master done. Yes, it's not platinum, but it's showing people how to do it. Yeah, hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Golden Age Computer Core, and that's all she came up with? I could have said that. If you'd like my insight, I filed an after-action report.